Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I'm bringing you today's word for June 14th, 2021. I'm teaching a series entitled Leveling Up with the Word of God. Why? Because I believe that this is a season for us to level up. This is a season that God desires, and I'm talking about God's desires today, but God desires that we would desire him, that we would desire what he desires, and what he desires for this season that we're living in right now is for us to walk in new levels. That means that there are new levels made available for us. The new levels are made available to us by grace, and we must then lay hold of what God is declaring and decreeing and decided. What God has already decided, what God is decreeing over the season, we lay hold of what God is providing by grace. We lay hold of it with our faith. But I've been teaching about the Word of God, and we're going to go back to that again this morning. If you are going to level up in this season, you got to level up with the Word. said, uh, I've been teaching a series entitled Leveling Up with the Word from the Parable of the Sower. I want us to go back to the Parable of the Sower again this morning, and I'm going to talk about desires today. The title of today's message comes in the form of a question, actually two questions. So I have two questions for you this morning. Listen, uh, open up your heart to these two questions. What do you want in life, right? Look at me. I, I'm asking you, like, what do you really want in life, in your heart? And then that's the second question. What is your heart's desire? Like, what is the true desire of your heart? Like, deep down in your heart, what is it that you desire? Now, before I get into these, let me just say something about, um, about you know, the book that's coming up. That's gonna, I'm going to release my first book on June 26th. And then uh, for those of you that received the email, you should have gotten an email uh, where I'm also releasing a series of journals. And so uh, I, I was just led to put some journals together. The reason why I put the journals together is because my, I've been walking with God for 25 plus years, but my, my time with the Father in meditation, right? I keep telling you to meditate, meditate on God's word day and night. That meditation time, that medication time with God and his word has been critical to my walk. And so I just pray that you would open up your heart to that as well. These journals will, they're guided journals to kind of help you uh, through that process. And so now that as I'm getting into the word, I'm still uh, moving my setup a little bit here. I want to make sure there we go. I think this is going to be better. All right. So let's get into the word here. Let's go back to the parable of the sower. Uh, in the parable of the sower, we've been looking at Mark chapter 4, verses 13 through 20. This is what the Bible says. The farmer is like someone who takes God's word, seed, and plants it down inside of people. Now, sometimes the seed falls along the side of the road. Those are like the people that hear the word of God, but their understanding is unfruitful. They don't understand it. And because they don't understand it, Satan can come immediately and snatch away the word that was sown in their heart. Other people are like the seed that's planted amongst the rocky ground. These are the people that quickly and gladly accept the word of God. They say high five, they, they say amen and they high five their neighbor, but they do not allow the word of God to go deep into their lives. And as a result, then as soon as trouble comes, the persecution comes because of the word that they receive, they're quick to give up. Now, other people are like seed that's planted amongst the thorny weeds. And this is what we've been studying for a while now. The thorny weeds, the word gets down in their heart, right? The word, the seed of the word gets down in the soil of their heart, but their heart has become full of other things, Jesus said. And then Jesus gave us three categories of other things. He said the cares of this world or the worries of this life, the love of money, which we dealt with already, and then lust for other things or selfish desires. And these other things grow up like weeds and the weeds choke out the word and it keeps the word from working. And then other people are like good ground. Say good ground. Ha! Other people are like good ground. They, they receive the word of God. They let the word do what it does. The word starts to work and then the word produces a harvest. Sometimes 30 times more. Sometimes 60 times more. Sometimes 100 times more. And you and I, we're after 100. Say amen to that. All right. So as I've been looking at these three categories of the the weeds, right? We looked at the cares of this world. We studied that already. The love of money. We studied that already. And then the other one was Jesus said everything else they want or selfish desires. When you have desires in your heart that were not birthed in the heart of God, they become selfish desires. And these selfish desires can become weeds that choke out the word. So what does this mean for you today? On this Monday morning, 
What does this mean for you today? I have two things to share with you on this morning. I want you to rid your heart and your mind of all distractions. Two things. Number one, here we go. So number one, priorities matter to God. Priorities matter to God. Our God is a God of priorities. He, even in the Old Testament, he said, listen, I'm a jealous God. Don't have any other gods before me. There are no other gods beside me, right? God was like, I check. Uh, there's no other gods but me, right? So priorities matter to God. We serve a God who does not look at your outward appearance. We serve a God, this is 1 Samuel 16 and 7, who looks at your heart. God is not looking at your outward appearance. He's looking at the intent of your heart. And he knows when your heart is set on other things. Now, you may be able to fool people. You may be able to come to church, clap on the second and fourth beat, if that's how you, your church goes down. Or there's some churches they clap on the first and third beat. Either way, you, you, you're clapping on the right beat. You have them on the right clothes. When they say God is good, you say all the time. When they say all the time, you say God is good. So you, you may be able to fool people. You may be able to look like you got it. You put all together, right? And you look good on the outside, but God is searching your heart. God is looking at the desires of your heart and he checks your heart daily. God wants to be first place. He wants to be, he wants to occupy the highest position in your heart. He wants to have the highest position in your life. And he, if he does not have the highest position, he knows that your heart has become consumed with selfish desires with other things. And Jesus is saying that if your heart becomes full of other things, selfish desires, then the word is not going to work. It's not that there's something wrong with the word. It's something wrong with your heart. It's not that there's something wrong with the seed. There's something wrong with the soil. So when your heart is full of selfish desires, it's not going to produce the harvest that the father wants it to produce. Instead, it's going to produce weeds. It's going to produce weeds. So when people look at you, they will see that your heart, your life is full of something. Let, let me say it this way. Your life is full of something, but God just wants it to be full of him. When your life is full of competing priorities, your life is going to produce something. It just won't be the something that God wants. So to be clear, let me, let me be clear about this. You can be born again, accept that Jesus is Lord, get born again. Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of you. Now you're born again. You're going to heaven. You can go to heaven and have missed out on the one opportunity that you had on this planet. You can be born again and then still not do what God has called you to do. You can be born again and then still be selfish. You can be born again and then still be carnal. You can be born again and then not renew your mind. And so, so no, your spirit was saved, but your soul is being saved. And so you have to, it's through the renewing of your mind. You have to die to sin. You have to die to self. You have to die to selfishness in order to do what God sent you to this planet to do. You can get to heaven only to realize that you wasted your opportunity on this planet because you were selfish. You pursued things that were birthed in your heart and not in God's heart. God wants your life to be all about him. Say amen. Amen to that. It comes down to this. God wants your life to be all about him. And he's not going to force you to be blessed. If God is not a puppet master, you are not a puppet. God is not pulling your strings. God is not forcing you to do anything. If you stubbornly walk down the path that you want to walk down, even though the Holy Spirit is telling you something else, then God will stand by and allow you to reap the repercussions of your decisions. You are going to reap a harvest one way or another. And so at the end of the day, if you want the harvest that God wants, then you must yield to him. You must submit to him in all your ways. It, you must die to the person that you became on your own so that you could become the person that God called you to be for such a time as this. At the end of the day, God made plans for you from the foundations of the world. He wants you to walk in those plans. He is revealing those plans. He wants you to listen, to be discerned discerning of the impulses of the Holy Spirit so that you could do what God called you to do for such a time as this. But if you don't and you choose self over God and you pursue selfish desires and you're like, forget, you know, Brother Pina, don't talk to me about that. I have a plan. I already, I, I can't, yeah, I, get, I go to church and everything, but I have a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, a long-term plan. I already know where I'm going to be. I already laid all these things out. Okay, cool. Your plans are good. But don't you realize that God already made plans from the foundations of the world? So you need to check with God to ensure that your plans are in alignment with his plans. And if they're not, if you ever get to the point where your plans don't line up with God's plans, you must be willing and, and you must have a heart that yields to God, that submits unto God, that puts his will above your will. And so that you do not get to the end of your life only to realize that you're full of yourself and that you never got over yourself. And so at the end of the day, God wants some things for you, and he wants you to want what he wants. Say amen to that. All right, number two, 
God wants you to want him. God wants you to want him. David said, and I'm going to look at two scriptures that David penned. In Psalms 27 and verse 4, New Living, the Bible says, there is one thing, Lord, this is David. He says, there's one thing, Lord, that I seek the most, like the number one. There's only one thing that I seek the most, and that's to live in your house all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. Only one thing the King James says, have I desired of the Lord. I want to dwell in his courts. I want to dwell in his temple. I want to delight in his ways. I want to live a life that is pleasing in God's sight. I don't ever want to get to the end of my life to find out that I was full of myself. I want my life to be full of God and his desires for me. Say amen to that. In Psalms 84 and verse 10, the Bible says, David said, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Man, I would rather be, David said, I would rather be an usher, a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. He's saying there's one thing that I desire, listen, above everything else, and that's God. He said, I would rather be an usher in the house of my God than to be the CEO of something that God didn't send me to be the CEO of. I'm saying, I want God. I, my desire is God. My singular pursuit in life is God. So walking with God is really all it's not that complicated i think people make it more complicated than what it is god made plans for you from the foundations of the world and when you get born again you must be willing to give up your plans for his plans when you get born again you must be willing to die to self so that you can become the man the woman that god called you to be for such a time as this and that's it if you're willing to die to self if you're willing to die to self you're also going to die to sin if you're willing to die to self and die to sin you're going to die to selfish desires and then you can be led by the impulses of the holy spirit so that you can do whatever god sent you to this planet to do so that you can leave a mark in this world that will not easily be erased and since god knows your heart he knows when you have made him number one he knows and he knows when you have not and so you you can't you can't trick God. You can fool people, but you can't fool God. And so since you can't fool God, God knows when you've made him number one. And look at me. Let me tell you something. If you ever get to the point where you make God number one, all I want, God, is what you want for me. That's it. All I want is what you want. Now, there are times where I get frustrated. I don't like st stuff that's going on on the job. I'm like, God, I could do something else. Holy Spirit says, did I tell you to go do something else? Oh, snap. I'm sorry. All I want is what you want. There are times where you get frustrated. Maybe you're running your business. You're like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. The Holy Spirit says, okay, did I tell you to shut down the business? Okay, my bad. All I want is what you want. Yeah, there are times, you said, you're, maybe, I know that there's people in a marriage that they don't want to be in it anymore. And they're like, yeah, I don't know if I want to do this. And the Holy Spirit says, did I tell you to leave? No. So then, okay, my bad. All I want is what you want. You got to want what God wants. You got to have a desire for God's desires. You got to place him number one. You got to give him the highest chamber in your heart. And if you do, God, there is no good thing that God would not withhold from you. When you are living your life pleasing before God, when you are living a life that is upright and righteous and being led of the Holy Spirit and doing whatever God wants you to do, even when you don't want to do it, and you're submitting unto him in all your ways, even when it costs you something, even when it, when it is sacrificial towards you. Listen, I'm in the Dominican Republic right now, and I'm going to see some kids, the kids that we minister to here, and I'm excited. But guess what? I had to leave my kids to come see these kids. And that's a sacrifice. I had to leave my wife to come see these kids. And that's a sacrifice. But God will lead you to do things. And when you have a heart for him and you put his desires above your own desires, he will withhold no good gift from you. David wrote these things. David was a flawed man. David made mistakes. He was a murderer. He, he was an adulterer. He committed adultery, then got the woman pregnant, then had the, the woman's husband killed. But, but in the New Testament, when the New Testament documents David, it doesn't capture any of that. God will always be kind to you in history when you yield unto him. The, in the New Testament, the Bible calls David a man after God's own heart because God saw his heart. You got to have a heart for God. You got to have a heart for God's desires. You got to you got to place God's desires above your desires. And if you do, God will use you for your for his glory. Sure, you're not going to be perfect. Sure, you're going to make mistakes. You are flawed. You're a human. You you have issues. Yeah, you're not going to do everything right. And when you do when you when you do something wrong, Satan is going to come and come and try to get you into fear and guilt and shame and condemnation. And the Holy Spirit is going to come. But the Holy Spirit is not going to convict you of sin. The Holy Spirit is going to convict you of your righteousness. The Holy Spirit will remind you. No, no, you're 
still a son of the most high God. No, 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 no. You're still a woman of God. I want to use you because I want to use you. I want to, yeah, you made a mistake. Now get, dust yourself off, receive forgiveness from the father, forgive yourself and keep stepping. David forgave himself. David got forgiveness from the father and David kept going. If you keep going, you will become the man, the woman that God called you to be. Sure, you're not going to be perfect. Sure, you're going to make mistakes. Okay, fine. But at the end of the day, God knows your heart and he's looking for you. If you ever get to the point where, Lord, all I want is what you want for me. I don't want nothing else. There's nothing else. Then he will withhold no good thing. Even when it comes to blessing, even when it comes to causing you to increase, there's things that, that God will lead you to do. And you don't, you're like, Lord, really? You're like, Lord, that's really, you want to bless me like that? Yes. Why? Because even when it comes to blessing, even when it comes to good things, there's uh, so many things that God has led us to do. And I'm like, Lord, I, I didn't ask for all that. God is like, no, I want you to have it. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. And then God has a plan. God has, God will lead you to do things. Matter of fact, let me just say this as I close. The apartment that I'm in right now, this condo, God told me to buy this condo uh, uh, in, um, in July of 2015. God connected us to the schools here in the, in the Dominican Republic in October. I didn't even know why God was telling us to buy the condo. The condo was, was in the construction phase. And I walked into this apartment and the Holy Spirit said to me, this is your, this is your home. You, you have to buy this place. And I told Isabella, and we set our faith in agreement. Now, we didn't, we didn't know why. But, but see, God knows. If you just yield to him, God knows what he was going to do through our lives. We were just retiring from the military. We were still on active duty, as a matter of fact. But we didn't know. What, but God knew. See, there are things that God planned for you. As long as you yield to him, you, you, are, you are led of the impulses of the Holy Spirit and you don't have selfish desires, then there's nothing that God will withhold from you. Matter of fact, he will bless you beyond your desires. He will bless you beyond your imaginations. That's me. I'm a witness. I'm Ephesians 3 and 20 witness. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think or even imagine according to the power that worketh on the inside of you if your heart is yielded towards him. Say amen to that. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, this is a season of leveling up for me. I level up by leveling up my heart. Now, there were times in my life where I pursued other things. Those days are over. You are my number one priority. I give you first place. I pursue your purpose. I want to be the man you call me to be. So I died to sin. I died to self. I died to selfishness. I died to selfish pursuits. And as I do, your word works in my life. You produce fruit in me. You produce fruit from me. And you use me, Father, to leave a mark in this world that will not easily be erased. This is why I keep declaring, greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word, so please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages and you want my notes, go to todaysword.org, click on the big red subscribe button, put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Listen, I love you. God loves you more. I want you to walk into this day pursuing God with a heart yielded towards him. And then the word is going to work in your life. Do me a favor. Leave me some comments in the chat because I go back and I read every comment. And then share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you.